Hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff and I have a question for you. Have you ever made a project using iron-on vinyl only to have your project crack or peel in the wash? It is so frustrating. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a bunch of tips and tricks for helping your iron-on vinyl to stick better and last longer. I have a list of 22 different tips for you to try. And of course, you are probably already doing some of these things, but hopefully you'll find something new on this list. If you have a tip or trick that I haven't covered, go ahead and leave that in the comments. I would love to know what you do to help your iron-on vinyl stick better, and I think it would also help out other viewers. Tip number one is to read the tag. So with whatever blank you're working with, start by reading the tag and figuring out what material you're working with. So for example, this cute little bib is 100% cotton. This t-shirt from Bella Canvas is about 50% polyester, 50% cotton. And this swim shirt is 100% polyester. Knowing what type of fabric you have will help you choose which iron on vinyl, which brings me to tip number two. Always make sure you're using the right iron on vinyl for your project. You can put just about any type of iron on vinyl on cotton or polyester, but if you have sort of a stretchy, sporty material like this, you may want to opt for something like Cricut's Sport Flex. This has a little bit more flexibility to it, means it stretches a little better and it works a lot better on these sort of active wear fabrics. But if you're just using something like cotton or a cotton poly blend, you can use just about any other type of iron on. Tip number three is that iron on vinyl can have a shelf life. Most of it can be stored indefinitely, but if you have some particularly older iron-on vinyl and it's not sticking very well, it very well could be that the adhesive has just gotten too old. To help extend that shelf life, you want to make sure you're storing your vinyl right. So you want it to be in a temperature-controlled room, you don't want it to be too hot or cold, um, 30 to 50 percent humidity if you can swing it, and you don't want it to be sitting in the sun. Tip number four is to pre-wash your blank. You want to do this because you don't want your blank to shrink after you've put the iron-on vinyl on top of it. Um, if you do that, it can cause cracking or the little ripples. You definitely don't want that. So pre-wash your blank and you want to make sure you pre-wash it without fabric softener or a dryer sheet. Um, both of those things leave residues and they can keep your iron-on vinyl from sticking really well. Tip number five is to know if your blank has any seams or buttons or zippers or anything like that that might get in the way of a good press. So for example, I have this little canvas bag here and it has a zipper at the top. Um, if you go to press this um, and you press down on it, that zipper is going to lift up your heat press just enough that it may not get a firm press on your iron-on vinyl. To help combat this, you can use something like a pressing pillow. So I'll unzip this here and show you what you can do. So I have these little pressing pillows and I'll link to these below, but you can put this in here. So when you go to press your project, the zipper is not going to be higher than the rest of your project. And this can really help create a much better uh, press. You can also use something small, like the small Cricut Easy Press, if you're doing a onesie, for example. It sits right between the seams on the onesie, so there's nothing getting in the way of that really strong press. Speaking of a heat press, number six is to choose the right heat press. Um, you really obviously are probably working with what you have, but again, if you have something like a onesie and you have a choice between using a larger Easy Press and a smaller Easy Press, choose the smaller Easy Press because it will fit between the seams. You also don't want to be using a household iron if you can help it. Um, a household iron has hot and cold spots and it often doesn't adhere the um, iron on very well. So if you can use an easy press, a heat press, Cricut Auto Press, something like that, you're going to get a much better press. Tip number seven is to lint roll your project. You want to do this because if there's any dust or hair or anything like that that can get trapped underneath the iron on vinyl when you press it, it can keep it from having good adhesion. So go ahead and lint roll your project where you're going to add your decal. I've already cut and weeded my decal and I've placed it here on my shirt. Then tip number eight is to set the correct temperature. You're going to start by using the manufacturer's recommended temperature. Almost always this will be the correct temperature and you shouldn't have any problems. It's very easy to overcook or undercook vinyl though, so don't choose something that's much higher or much lower than the manufacturer's temperature. If you choose something much higher, you can actually burn off the adhesive and it won't stick. If you choose something lower, um, the adhesive won't melt and it won't stick. So really trying to stick within a couple degrees of the manufacturer's temperature is the best way to go. Number nine is choose the right pressure. Caesar Easy Weed is medium pressure. I'm actually going to use my Cricut Auto Press, which means that it's going to choose the pressure for me. I have found that it does this very well for a wide variety of blanks, especially if they need medium pressure. Um, but if you're doing this yourself, you don't want to use something like an Easy Press and like really bear down your weight on it. Again, it can help burn off the adhesive and you don't want it to do that. So instead, again, check the manufacturer's recommendations and go with the pressure that they suggest. 
Step number 10 is to preheat your blank. So I'm actually gonna walk over to my Easy Press and I'm going to peel this off and I'm going to preheat this blank for 15 seconds. This will remove any moisture out of the blank and also completely flatten the blank so that it will give me a good pressing surface. You can see that I put my t-shirt sideways in my Cricut Auto Press. This helps me avoid those seams and get a much nicer press. Tip number 11 is to press down on your blank. Now, if you're using something like a Cricut Auto Press or a regular heat press, this is easy. It presses, it closes, it does the work for you. But if you're using something like a Cricut Easy Press or a household iron, even though I don't recommend it, um, you don't want to be moving it around while you're pressing. You want a nice firm press with both hands and holding it there just like this. If you need to be able to move it because your decal is bigger than your actual press, hold down, lift up, over and press. You don't want to be moving it around because this actually makes the um, adhesive in the iron on vinyl stick to little parts of it that it shouldn't. So you really just want that straight down pressure and press. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my machine and finish this press and I'll be back. Tip number 12 is to know whether your project is warm peel or cool peel. Usually the packaging will say. Um, for this Caesar Easy Weed that I'm using, it says either works, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel it cool because it's actually been sitting here for a few minutes. But if it says warm peel, you wanna make sure that you're peeling it while it's warm. Um, if you wait until it's cool, it may be a little difficult to peel off. I found that almost everything can be cool peeled. It may just take a little bit more effort to get it off. Tip number 13 is to peel off the carrier sheet in one smooth motion. Sometimes if you peel it off in fits and starts, um, it will stretch the vinyl in different ways. And you definitely don't want that because that can create places for it to crack or peel in the wash. So once you get going, go ahead and don't stop. I'll just go ahead and peel it off here like that. Tip number 14 is to set your iron on. So I'm gonna head back over to my Easy Press and I'm gonna use a pressing cloth over the top of this and I'm gonna press it for another five seconds. Then I'm gonna flip it over and press another five seconds from the back. This will really help set that adhesive. All right, my shirt is done and it looks really good. Um, one of the things I like to be able to see is a little bit of the shirt's um, texture through the iron-on. Um, if it looks super smooth, you may wanna press it again to make sure that it's really adhered to the shirt. All of my final tips have to do with washing. So for number 15, you wanna wait at least 24 hours before running this through the wash. Um, often I try and wait 72 hours. You really wanna give that adhesive time to actually sit within the fabric get a good bond um, before throwing it in the wash. Tip number 16 is to wash your garment inside out. That way the iron-on is only rubbing against the inside of your shirt. It's not coming up against, you know, stiff jeans or some, you know, pockets, buttons, other things in the wash. Um, it's only coming up against the inside of the shirt and that can help your iron-on last a lot longer as well. When choosing a setting, wash your clothes on cold or warm. You definitely don't want to wash them on hot because again, this is a heat activated adhesive and if you wash it on hot, it will reactivate that adhesive and it can peel off very easily. Number 18 is to use a mild detergent. You don't want anything that is brightening or stain removing or anything like that. Um, again, those are all things that can play with the adhesive that you don't want. Number 19 is to dry your clothes on low or hang dry. Um, again, it's a heat activated adhesive. You throw it in the hot dryer and it can mess with your um, iron on. Um, I prefer to line dry things. I just have a drying rack. It works really well, but you can tumble dry these on low. Just make sure you're not using that super high heat. Number 20 is that you don't really want to iron this. Again, heat activated adhesive. If you do find that everything is really wrinkled, you can hit it with an iron. Um, but you want to make sure to put a towel or a pressing cloth and use a lower heat setting on your iron so that you don't reactivate that adhesive. Um, but generally, try and avoid ironing if you can help it. Number 21 is to avoid using bleach, fabric softeners, those sorts of things. All of those things can leave residues um, or can interact with the adhesive and make your iron on vinyl peel or crack or all of those things that you just don't want it to do. Number 22 is don't dry clean. Maybe you're very fancy and you dry clean all of your t-shirts. I don't know, you do you. Um, but projects made with iron on vinyl really are designed to be washed in your home washer um, and the dry cleaning process is not um, good for the iron on vinyl. Okay, so that was 22 tips to help you get your iron on to stick better and last longer. Again, if you have any of your own tips, I would love to hear them in the comments. Go ahead and leave one down there. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give the video a like, subscribe to my channel for more weekly content, and I'll see you next week.